Stanley, um, you've played for the Portuguese national team before, um, but uh, probably some Portuguese fans um, might not know you that much. So the first thing I'd like to ask you is to introduce yourself, let people know who Stanley Borden is and uh, the Portuguese connection that exists. Of course. Um, should I look into the camera <laughs> or, should I, or, or, or directly to uh, you? Talk to me. Talk I'm to talking me. to the fans. <laughs> um, no, uh, I'm Stanley Borden. I, my father is American. My mother is Portuguese. That's where the Portuguese connection comes from. I grew up in Turkey for the majority of my life. Currently, I play and study at Duke University, studying computer science and playing basketball on the basketball team. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. This has been a great experience so far over the past month or so. And I'm really excited for what we have coming up with the other practice games and the European Championships in Montenegro. Um, we're doing this in English, but you can talk Portuguese, right? You're learning Portuguese. Sim, eu estou aprendendo português agora, sim. Não é muito bem, mas eu posso falar. But I'm sure the guys on the team have uh, told you a few words in Portuguese. Maybe you can you can say them here on on TV, on camera, but eu, but I'm sure you know them. Eu sei um pouco poucas expressões portuguesas, <laughs> mas todas não são muito ap apropriadas para aqui. Um, but uh, no, I, yeah, they, the guys have taught me a couple words. The thing is, you know, when you learn Portuguese formally, you don't learn all the expressions or anything colloquial. So. <laughs> with the guys, I've just learned a lot of more, a lot more colloquial expressions, especially Portuguese expressions. And basketball related also, right? Basketball related as well. Okay, I to screen. Yeah. You know, like very simple things as well. But also when it comes to languages, and because basketball like was made in English, you know, Dr. James Naismith, whatever else, a lot of the words just translate well. But, you know, th if it's a screen or something else, you know, you just shout, they're right, they're right, they're scared, they're scared, the black, black, red, red. All of our calls, you know, when it comes to that, are in English anyway, because it's just faster to say red instead of vermeia. That's yeah. one syllable versus three, you yeah. know. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different things learned from the guys, and uh, it's I don't know. For me, it's also good to practice my Portuguese and get into the rhythm because it's an immersive experience, right? Like I'm with a bunch of Portuguese speakers in a Portuguese place, being forced to speak it and being forced to hear it all the time as well. So I'm constantly adapting and learning and getting better. Uh, you took Portuguese lessons in, in Duke, uh, Duke University uh, last, uh, last year um, yeah. because you really wanted to learn Portuguese. Uh, and did, are you studying Portuguese uh, history also? What have you been doing to, um, well, to, to uh, help you with the guys and with, uh, when you come to the Portuguese national team? Yeah, so, I mean, because I grew up in Turkey, I did not have a lot of exposure to Portuguese as a language. Sadly, it just was the way that it worked out. Yeah. Um, but your grandparents are Portuguese, right? They are Portuguese. This is true. But even then, because of the setting I was in, not much Portuguese was spoken. A little bit, but not too much. Yeah. Um, as a result, for me, when I was at Duke, you know, took, I took Chinese my first semester, but into my second semester, there was an accelerated elementary Portuguese course. And I already spoke Spanish as a result of both family and school. So. I decided to go and be a part of that. And granted, tristemente, era brasileira. Okay, era brasileira. So it's, it was a bit harder to acclimate to Portuguese, Portuguese, and continental Portuguese. But I wanted to learn it, and I wanted to learn it properly because I knew that coming onto the national team again for my second year for Subvint, it was important to be a bit faster, to, be, to understand everything, to make it easier for me. And learning languages is cool. So there was, you know, why not, right? But because you know five languages, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, yes. Um, so I have the languages background already, but when it comes to Portuguese specifically, you know, I am Portuguese, and for me, it's a bit sad that I did not fully speak Portuguese when coming onto the national team. So I want to take the opportunity where if I have a free course space at Duke, why not take advanced Portuguese? You know, why not? Why not take accelerated Portuguese and be ready to come here and speak and use? You know. One of the days when everyone was going back to see their families, I was here in the hotel, so I decided to go into Lisbon, both to practice my Portuguese and to see what there was. You know, worked out in the morning, went to Lisbon. And I was actually able to communicate and speak to people and not need to switch into English. And yeah. most, you know, most other Portuguese people speak English too. So I, I thought it was pretty cool to be able to communicate and do things in a language that really is mine, but that I just hadn't known yeah. fully before, so. Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Let's talk a bit about Duke. Um, how did it all happen? 
Um, it's a very cool, uh, long story. I mean, COVID, as you know, I'm not going to get into it because everyone had to deal with it, but COVID, like, it messed things up regarding college recruiting and everything else. Um, and so going into the Portuguese national team last year, my mindset was just play, you know, do things as well as you can for the team. And then I was going to go to Duke anyway. I got in academically. And then after the Portuguese, uh, after the European championships or the challenger last year, um, when I got to Duke, the coaches and I were in contact with each other, met with the coaches, worked out with the team a couple times, and very quickly, like within the first couple of weeks, they're like, okay, you're walking onto the team, like <laughs> this is the thing. There are more details in the story that like, it's, it's very cool to explain and talk about, but it was pretty much just, okay, like come like one day, come another day, like do a, do a pickup game with the guys, see how you fare against Mark and Paolo and these other guys, you know, the other bigs, and then we'll see how it all works out. So joined the team um, and then did a bunch of like preliminary things in order to be ready. And then afterwards, just getting into practice and going. And for me, the experience of, you know, I always knew myself to be a good player, but you know, they even say if you're, if you're walking across the street and you're a basketball player and you have your stuff and you see a lot of good pickup players playing, like you should join them because it's only going to make you better. It's not the same thing. It's a very different level. <laughs> but playing against what is now five NBA draft picks every day in practice. And granted, being a walk-on, you are always in a helpful role. You're always in a supportive role. But being able to do that all the time, you know, going up against the physicality, the length, and the, 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 the amazing players that are, you know, Mark Williams, Theo John, Paolo Mancaro, you know, every day in practice, it really helps you develop as a player. It makes you more confident. It makes you more physical. It makes you better able to read situations, move faster. You know, as you know, the American game is much faster yeah. than the European game. So all those things over time, it helped me adapt. And part of it also was, you know, physically, well, I'm seven feet tall, seven one, and a, a pretty good weight and size and, and of, a, of a good fluidity. It's, a, it's another level. So how to keep working, how to, you know, I worked with the strength and conditioning coaches. I did what I could in order to get myself to a high level, running every day after practice, lifting, doing extra things that I could. And I'm overall, I would say that the Duke experience so far, because I'm really excited for next year as well, it's, it, it was incredibly important and very useful for me as a basketball player, not only for what I could provide to the team, but for what the team gave me, which was not only physically, you know, a better body and a better mind and everything else, but also understanding what it means to be a really good teammate and be a part of a culture of winning. And so I, I learned a lot from being under Coach K and being under Coach Shire, Coach, Coach Jefferson, Coach Smith, and, and Coach Carowell as well. I mean, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of very good stuff. But, but you told it right now, you had a more of a helpful role. Um, you probably, from the beginning of the season, and probably the coaches have talked to you, um, wouldn't play a lot uh, or wouldn't have a lot of op opportunities, and that happened. Uh, uh, how do you prepare mentally for a season like that? I think, I think any good basketball player, any good team player understands their role, or if not understanding their role, they understand that they have to be unselfish and want what's best for the team. Like my... My goal with the Portuguese team is not to score 20 points a game and, and get a double-double or triple-double or anything like that. My goal is to help our team win. And if that means that I score a lot, then that means I score a lot. If that means I assist a lot, that means I assist a lot. But my goal is never going to be personal stats or minutes or anything like You're that. You're a team player. I think everyone should be, you know? Yeah. And that's the way to be. And Duke helped me understand that better. It's not to say that at times you think, oh, I wish I was playing, I wish I had this experience, but You know, even if you are a bench player, even if you are not playing in many games, you learn to be a really good teammate. And that's invaluable, I think, because, I mean, if you just look all around the world and at every single high level sports team, you'll find that the best players are usually the best teammates. And even then, if they're not the best players, then they help their team win. And so there are, there's always some use. And I hope to play in the coming seasons. I hope to get more time and everything else. But in reality, my, I'm just very happy to be a part of the team and I'm very happy to help our team win in some way. Duke and now with the Portuguese national team. Yeah, uh, you were um, a part of 
the legacy of Coach K, so you've been a part of history. What was it like to practice with a legend like Coach K? Um, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, I knew the lore coming in behind Coach, and I knew everything behind it, but you know, one thing that he emphasized always was, like, it's not the fact that this is my last season, you know, like, that's not, just don't, it's not don't consider it, but it's more so, you know, we're playing a game, like, we're playing basketball, you know, the main priority here is winning, don't get lost in whatever else is happening, you know, every game is our most important game, right, every game is a championship game, especially in the NCAA tournament where you you lose and you're out of the tournament yeah. after one loss, but, you know, treat every game as to, uh, with the most respect that you possibly can, and so, how was it training under him? How was it training under that program? It was absolutely incredible. I learned a lot, both about myself and about how to be a good basketball player. Um, and yeah, it was invaluable. I, I'm really, I really appreciate the fact that I was a part of that. That was, that was incredible. You just said you, you had a chance to, to practice every day with five guys that became draft picks, um, including the number one draft pick draft pick, Paulo Banquero. Um, what was that like to, to see them, those guys, uh, go, go to the green room, uh, go up that stairs and just shake hands with Adam Silver? Honestly, I mean, I stayed up late to watch the draft, you know, five hour time difference between here and Eastern time in the U.S. Um, I saw everyone's name get picked. I, the only way I can describe it is I'm not, like, it's, that's not my success. It's their success and I'm just very happy for them. It's, you know, it's every basketball player's dream, or I think it is at least, to go to the NBA and do that. And so seeing my teammates do that, I was very, I was very happy for them. You know, it's, it's something that they were working at every day in practice, something that I saw personally how much they wanted, and I'm, I just couldn't be happier for them. Do you see those guys becoming uh, stars in their roles in the NBA? Um, I think considering the work ethic I've seen and everything else, they have every possibility to, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think so. And Paolo, what's Paolo like? What can you tell us about the number one pick in the draft? I mean, I can't give you anything, you know, any kind of insider scoop if that's what you're looking <laughs> for. But I mean, no, he's, he's a great guy. Um, you know, good teammate, very hard worker, and just a very, as, as, as evidenced by him being the number one pick, a very good basketball player. Okay. Yeah. Um, you've said it, you are have great expectations about next season. You're staying in Duke. Um, uh, but where do you see yourself in five, five years from now? I think right now my, uh, my priority is just, I won't say putting my head down because that looks like I'm you know, closing off everything around me, but more so just working as hard as I can, taking advantage of the opportunities I have now with the Subbint Portuguese national team and then with Duke next year or this coming year. And then just keep working and working and working and working on my body, working on my game, and then whatever the options are by the time that my college career is over, uh, then then we'll see what happens. But you know, that that, that that's all that I know for right now. Um, but I'm not trying to paralyze myself with decisions about the future at the moment. Yeah, live in the moment. Um, in the moment, you're with the Portuguese U20 national team, the Sovint, as you said, um, in perfect Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> um, what, uh, what do you bring to, to the table uh, in this national team? I think I bring a lot of physicality and experience. You know, like what, as I was talking about playing with five guys who are now going to the NBA and then also just being a part of, I think, what, you know, what was a very successful Duke team and going to the Final Four and everything else. Um, I think I bring a lot of experience and I think I bring a lot of aggressiveness when it comes to my, the way that I play. Um, obviously my height speaks for itself and the fact that I am a very tall player and that I also have a bit, you know, I, I'm, I'm a versatile player as well because I can shoot from the outside and I can also play in both the high and low post. Um, I think I bring a lot to the team, but I think most of all is just the mindset of, you know, yesterday, today's game day, you know, like guys, we got to be ready, we got to go. You know, being a voice in the locker room and being somebody who can, um, who can just be a good player for this team? Who can who can really help us win? Do you like that role of being almost a leader in the team? Very much so. Um, you know, since I was a kid, I think I've always had a kind of leadership role in whatever I've been in. Maybe it's just because naturally with my size, it just leads to that. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I would think it's more so the way that I speak and the way that I act and the way that I think. But I I, I like I like being someone who is. Uh, who is in that role, yeah, because I think, 
I think if if I'm able to spread that, I think every, I think our guys have it as well. They have the right mentality. But if I can reinforce that in the sense of like, don't worry about you know, don't worry about the last play. Worry about the next play. You know, like don't just if you miss if you miss the shot, then just run back on defense and let's get a stop and then let's go again. You know, things like that. Yeah. If I can help reinforce that mindset, I think I'm doing my role. Um, this team is going to play in Division A, which is a new experience for the the U20. Um, and the, the team is uh, built with guys from different uh, contexts. Some play here in Portugal in different levels of competition. Others play um, outside, uh, just like yourself. Um, do you see guys with one month of practice almost all on the same page? I, I think so. Um, within the one month, we've really become a more cohesive group. And that's just from knowing each other's playing styles, getting better chemistry. Um, though everyone might come from different areas, like me from, from Duke, uh, Krush from Juco in Wyoming, Prey from, uh, from uh, Juventud. Yeah. I think all of us, uh, and everyone else has that plays in Portugal as well, and wherever they might go in the future, I think everyone's on the same page because we all have the same goal. So we all know what we want to do. We all understand our, we all understand what we want with this team, which is to win and to compete in every single game. So. We had two games with Spain, which is always a contender to win the, the, the gold. Um, and we competed uh, mainly in the second game. Uh, what lessons did you take from those games? I think I'm, I can speak personally, but uh, you know, the first game I was way in my own head. I, was not, I wasn't as present as I would have liked to be. And in the second game, I just said, just run and jump. You know, just, just play the game. You know? Just do what you can personally to maximize the chance of your team winning. So for me, that's getting rebounds. That's making that's both taking and making good shots. That's being aggressive, and that's you know setting good screens. All the little things. Um, I think the second game we paid more attention to detail. We we were much stronger on defense. We you know we looked at the tape after the first game as well to see in which ways that we can improve. And overall, I think we just played a better game overall, like both offensively and de and defensively. We have things to work on because every team always has something to work on. But I think we, you know, showing how well that we can, you know, that we competed with Spain in that second game, only losing by five and being up for the majority of the third quarter and then into the fourth. If we can just maintain a bit more consistency, lower turnovers, little things like that, there's a very high chance that we win that game. And if we take that mentality and understand that we are a good team and we, because we are, and that we can play with anybody and compete and win. And I, I think I think it's done. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's, there's nothing more to say. <laughs> yeah, we 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 saw the team competing against Spain, um, and the guys I've been talking to this morning uh, have all said kind of the same thing. Uh, if we win the intangible battle, um, being the first to, to go on the floor for that loose ball, um, winning the rebounding battle, um, we have a chance to really compete against everybody. Do you feel the same? One hundred percent. As you know it. As long as we have that fighter's mentality, as you were saying, you fight for the intangibles, and we don't overthink things, and we just play the game, and we and know it as we play, know it as we practice. Yeah, exactly what you said. I think if we do all those things, then we have, we're, we're a real contender. You know, we, we really can just compete in every game and possibly win. Or actually, no, just win. That's our goal every game, so there it is. The, um, the people here in Portugal will be seeing the, the games uh, from distance. Uh, what can they expect from the Portuguese national team? They can expect us to play hard, to play with our hearts, to represent Portugal well, and uh, to do as to do what we can to to just yeah to, to show our country off on a on a good state uh, in a good way to show that you know Portuguese basketball is something to be reckoned with. We're not you know when you when you look at some teams and you think of some countries' basketball programs, you're like oh this isn't really anything or oh yeah we can you know. This country will definitely beat this country. I think the goal is to show, you know, we're someone to face. Like we're someone who's going to compete and we're going to give you a tough game every game. And that's just the way that we are because it's the way that we play.